So I suppose we should start off with both of you introducing yourselves. Tess, do you want to go first because you are first yeah. on my screen? Sure. And yeah, I'm Tess James Mackey. And um, my uh, YA thriller comes out in February 23. And um, it's called Someone Is Watching You. And it's about a girl who goes exploring an abandoned prison to impress her friends, um, but soon finds herself trapped in there, not alone. And she'll definitely be lucky to escape alive. And that's all I've got to say about it for now. <laughs> <laughs> and how about you? What what you, I must say, both of your titles are like so good. <laughs> Thank you. It went through a long process, I think, for both of us actually. We sort of like play around the titles. Um yeah, not the original. <laughs> definitely not. not. Um, yeah, so I'm Ravina Goron. Um, my book is This Book Kills. Yeah, that title went through several, <laughs> several changes, but we got there in the end. Um, and it will be coming out in January 23. And like Tess, it's a YA thriller. With both of your books, obviously, you've gone down the YA thriller route. What do you think it was that drew you to thrillers? Do you personally love reading them? Was it kind of the twists and turns is that something that you enjoy writing or uh, I'm just really interested to know we'll start with you this time Avina. Um, well I am an Agatha Christie mega fan <laughs> so she actually changed the way I read books so when I was younger I always read the endings of books first because I was always worried about, you know, what was going to happen. And then I was just a very worried child. And I would read the endings of Agatha Christie's books. And I'd be like, I never would have guessed that, you know, XYZ would be the murderer after the first three chapters. Why on earth has this happened? And I realized that I was actually missing the crucial journey of like the characters and their motivations and what makes them people. And I think from there, I just developed this love of murder mysteries and that sense of you just need to keep going, you need to keep reading, you need to keep turning the pages and find out what happens. And it's the ending is important, but it's also the journey of how you get there. So yeah, Agatha Christie just hugely inspired that. And they're just so much fun as well to write. I can imagine they're really fun to kind of, especially like being the author and knowing kind of what's happening like just threading those little like pieces of information in and like knowing that it's a crucial kind of hint for later on I bet that's so much fun to play with what about you Tess what drew you to kind of thrillers I think um so I wasn't quite as uh, into thrillers from a child as Ravina was um I played with a couple of different genres before discovering that I enjoyed writing thrillers um, and I think for me it was just realising my writing style really fit the genre and when I actually wrote a thriller for the first time it was honestly this moment where everything kind of clicked and it was yeah a real aha moment um, and yeah, drafting felt suddenly not easy I'm not call it easy but you know it felt right um, and I think it's just that focus on plot um, and the paciness of the writing which really just suited me um, and I realised now in anything I read as well it, that's the most important thing for me the the plot you know there has to be a real story there to make it really get me engaged um, and then all the other stuff is kind of the, you know, the wrapping if you like um, so yeah I just I realised that it's it suits me and it keeps me entertained as a writer and a reader and um, yeah. yeah and so since I started writing it I've devoured more of the genre as well and yeah you kind of get it's definitely one of those genres that you can get really like you start doing the challenging yourself how early you can guess the twist and and that kind of thing so yeah it's, it's quite um quite an exciting thing to write and to read definitely I definitely think thrillers there's something about reading a thriller that you don't get with other genres and it is that you're always trying to like see how much of a detective you can be at the same time and see if you can figure out what's going on before like a, the big reveal or the big twists 
and if you if you get it even if you get it it's still as enjoyable because it's almost it adds to the reading experience having this like you're journeying as well you're like an extra detective in the novel um yeah. which is something I really enjoy um because I I didn't read a lot of thrillers until probably the past two two three years I was I still am a fantasy obsessed person but yeah I thrillers I they never clicked with me until I started reading YA ones and I think it's the pace yeah um yeah. that and kind I think, of comes with it I think I am I really like that there's always a, a clear goal and really clear stakes so you kind of know what you're rooting for um, even if it's like just to survive the night, so, you know, you can really get behind the protagonist and then, yeah, want them to, to succeed. So I suppose with both of them coming out in 2023, which is not far away now, and I'm super excited. Um, it's one of the few things that I'm excited for next year, book releases. Um, another year passing is always quite stressful but for some reason when I realise that there's books coming out that year that I want to read it makes it a little bit better um so do you want to tell us a little bit about the inspirations behind um your upcoming releases we'll start with Tess first this time sure um so my I always feel a little bit like cheated because um my inspiration is very much a real place in my hometown and um, there really was a prison shut in 2013 um, and it then reopened for things like tours and um, escape rooms and all sorts of things this huge Victorian building um, and they turned the soft the what used to be the gym into a soft play centre and um, so I was sitting there with my toddler daughter with not a lot of sleep and a lot of coffee just thinking how strange the, um, the setting was and how someone had to write a book set there um, and not knowing you know what that would be but um, going to change a nappy one day and taking a wrong turn and realizing there's no doors locked in this place and I didn't go fully trespassing but yeah it kind of made me realize this is just the perfect place to um to set something scary um, and I didn't really start with much of a, a plot I just kind of let it happen so once I had the setting and because it's literally a prison you can't really go too far off track there's quite a defined parameter there so um yeah just kind of played with a, a story that changed around quite a bit but it was very much a, a setting that inspired it originally that's always really interesting i love to know whether because i think for different writers it's different things sometimes the setting comes first sometimes it's a character and sometimes it's the kind of concept um but i always find it really in interesting to like when it's a setting although it, like i don't know how i feel about a soft play in an ex prison that feels really weird <laughs> it was weird <laughs> like i can imagine like an escape room concept would work really yeah. well in the prison, but like a soft play feels like a strange kind of thing yeah. to happen in what used to be a prison. Yeah, it was a it was a weird vibe. <laughs> <laughs> I went often enough to you know keep coming back. Must have been something about it. And and it inspired a book. So I mean, <laughs> you know, great great place really. So how about this book? Kills, what was the inspiration behind that? Well, I'd always, like I said, really loved Agatha Christie and I wanted to write a murder mystery, um, but the inspiration for it didn't really come until I went to um, law school. So I, I'm a trained lawyer and that's my day job. And I remember going to law school and just being surrounded by lots of people who had gone to private schools and boarding schools. And while I was there, and then onwards, when I actually started working in law and private practice in the city, um, I started questioning, we all ended up in the same job, in the same place. What was the difference between your educational background and mine? What did you spend that money on in your private school like upbringing versus me, who just you know, went to a, a state school? And then from there, I started thinking about 
you know, the additional benefits you might get from a private school versus boarding school and then started, sometimes I would feel slightly left out or, you know, like I needed to be more aware of myself because for me, I would, I would go to work and I would, you know, be walking around these, these really glitzy corridors and feeling sort of out of place. And um, I wanted to write a character sort of inspired by my background, inspired by you know, my upbringing and um, a British Indian main character. And then obviously I wanted to combine that with the sort of love of Agatha Christie and that, that murder mystery setting. So it all came together um, into, into this book, Gills. And I think the fact that I was sort of writing from those own experiences, that really helped the book come out quite quickly when I drafted it because I was like oh you know I can draw draw from this I can draw from this I can draw from what this person said and really put that all into the book so um, yeah definitely I think more of a theme <laughs> rather than the setting for me but I think books always they're so interesting when authors have drawn a, like on their own experiences because I think it just makes them even more kind of relatable and easier to engage with because it, that realness is always going to come across when you're writing from personal experience um and I think as well um it's such a common thing feeling like you're an outsider it might not necessarily be oh people have more money than me it might be you know any sort of thing but it's so common and I find that really interesting as well because if we all if it's very common to feel like an outsider is anyone is anyone an insider like yeah that's such an interesting like concept to explore as well so definitely because I think I think you're right I think I can't think of a single person who would view themselves as an insider even if I viewed them as one if I viewed them as being part of the main collective that they'd feel outside of something whether it be different from why I do um, and I it is always really interesting to explore that so setting is obviously very key in thrillers um so could you both tell us a little bit about more about yours I know we've got a prison and an elite school um is there a really pe interesting piece of information you could give us about setting without spoiling the main the, the book um, we'll go with you, Ravita, this time. Um, well, it's set in a boarding school. Um, it's an elite boarding school. It's very sort of, um, it's an old building, so it's too big for the amount of um, students that are in it. And that really like helps with the whole sort of pre creepy atmosphere, what's going to be around the corner, um, who's hiding down this corridor. But then I also wanted it to be, to feel quite claustrophobic. Like this is, this is their entire world. You know, the people that they wake up in the morning with, they go to school with, they hang around in the evening with, they, you know, hang around at night and then they all go to sleep. And then that repeats day in, day out. And I think boarding schools are just very, very good fodder, I think, for thrillers because you've got that closed atmosphere. You've got the lack of parents hanging around. You know, you've got teachers, but is it the same thing, you know? can you trust them and I think as well as I didn't go to boarding school as I mentioned I went to state school so I did ask you know around from different people um, about their boarding school experiences and obviously there's variations within the boarding school experiences themselves and I sort of like picked and chose what I wanted to take so hey buckles of boarding school and it's got all these sort of old traditions like you have to climb up on the first day of term holding a candle and that you know represents who knows what because it's just a random tradition that's hung around for just years and years and years so it was a really fun really fun place to to hang around in for a while even though it was very creepy as well would does I've, I, this this is probably only an interesting question to me does writing like Obviously, you used a boarding school as a setting. Does it make you feel like completely different about boarding schools now, having written such like a murderous book in one? Would it make you more worried to visit one, especially if it was like dark and late at night? <laughs> I think 
the thing for boarding school for me is that you just you can't get away sometimes you know when you're a teenager you might not always get get along with your friends and you know when I was in school I had a couple just very good friends but I wasn't sort of I wasn't any really popular people didn't really know it I was very quiet and it was a relief to be able to you know come home and I would sort of read my books and have my downtime and my quiet time and then the idea of going to a boarding school and just always being surrounded by people and always having like your schedule regimented and never being able to get away that sort of that in itself is, is, is scary to me so I don't know if, I don't know if I would ever ever want to go to one but um yeah it was interesting to explore that aspect of what happens if you can never get away from the people that you're with what happens if you can't trust the people that you're with if you don't necessarily get on with them what then because I think I've always thought it was a boarding school is like quite a fun experience you know like sleepovers with your friends all the time but you you don't get your time away from them like you don't have any respite so when you think of it that way it is mildly terrifying because I need I need me time yeah I think when I was little my sort of understanding boarding schools came from like King of Brighton you know, the St. Yeah. St. Clair, the Mary Towers, and then Zoe 101 on, on Nickelodeon, where it was just really, like, glamorous. So it was really fun to sort of explore it as an adult and actually think about, oh, what, what are the downsides? Yeah, definitely, because I think, like, as you say, TV, a lot of TV and films showed it as kind of like one big epic sleepover, mm. but actually the realities of it are probably not as as fun as that all the time now you wrote yours in a prison which is terrifying yeah so yeah I mentioned how important the setting was to my initial inspiration um but kind of hearing Rafina talk about the boarding schools made me realize how similar our settings actually are and I've never considered that but um, you know being Victorian building that you can't leave. Um, luckily for my protagonist, she's only there for a few hours rather than an entire school year. But yeah, just that that claustrophobia element. Um, and as writers, it is quite convenient for us if our characters aren't allowed to leave the setting. Um, <laughs> if, <laughs> whether it's, it's because they physically can't, it's like mine, or because they're at school, they're doing this. Um, so yeah, that that setting does really lean into it's it's almost a character itself I think um is that I'm not a particularly descriptive writer in the way it doesn't you know I wouldn't actually spend a lot of time describing a, a theme um so I think for me when I feature a particular setting it, it does almost need to come alive itself um and be part of the story rather than it you know being just a description of um, the place itself if that makes any sense yeah um and yeah, when you when you choose a a setting with a lot of character, then it does give you so many more options as well, um, and makes yeah a lot of fun to play with dark, twisty corridors and, and different features. Definitely, like I think I don't think I've ever read a thriller in a prison before. And when I heard about yours, I was like, this is genius. Why have I not like? seen this before like it's the ultimate like bad place for something to happen yeah. like, like you can't escape a prison but it's yeah. terrifying so with thrillers often comes twists and turns how as writers do you manage to weave these into the plot and keep track because I imagine there's so many things that need to kind of be like teased in the narrative that it can be like super complicated to try and weave them all in at the right spot so how as do you as a writer go about that we'll start with you this time too. sure um so I tend to write in a way that I can see as a, a layering kind of effect so I start with the the main plot and it's usually quite a simple you know, there's a main character, something happens or has happened um, and something is going to happen. Um, and I try not to write with a twist in mind um, because I prefer the, the plot and the story to, to be the most important element. Um, I don't really like to have the entire book hinge on a twist if possible. 
and I prefer to find the twist when it happens, if that makes any sense. So quite often I'll, I'll have the premise and idea and then I won't know what the twist is until I actually get to the climax and can think, ah, this will work. Um, and then my first draft usually ends up being incredibly short because it is such a, a basic outline. And then I go back and add subplots on with red herrings and their own twists, um, which is the way I find it easier than trying to do it all at once. Um, because, yeah, like you said, it, it, I always find it can be easy to get too focused on the twists and things just get messy and it gets quite stressful trying to write it. And then you can't always know, you know, how, it, if it doesn't happen organically, it, I feel like those little bits that you, you thread in to try and um, throw the reader off can almost seem a bit too obvious and a bit too forced. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of that kind of layering edit. So it takes so many edits to get to a final kind of picture. Um, and then by the time you've finished, you kind of think, oh, it's going to be really obvious now what is going to happen. And so that's when you need to, you know, your beta readers to, to check. You want it to be something that they could have guessed because otherwise it's not satisfying if it's so out of the blue that it's like that, you know, it doesn't mean anything to the reader and to the characters. Um, but obviously you also want it to be something that they didn't find painfully obvious either. How do you, like, how stressful is it, like, trying to get that though? Because I can imagine the entire time you're writing it, there's that stress that it's either too obvious or like too impossible like how do you deal with that is it just like relying on like having a really good editor to be that kind of like sounding board yeah I think having a good critique partner <laughs> looking at Ravina here helps a lot um because quite often you know we'll share about I share with her what I'm thinking what along the lines I'm thinking of and it can be really helpful to have someone from quite early on and um, just you know gently steer you especially when I get a bit too I try to solve my problems in plotting by making things happen that are just impossible <laughs> um so yeah it definitely helps to have someone as a sounding board to kind of bounce ideas off and then also have some readers there who you've not said a word to about the book um, and you throw it out them completely cold and get their you know complete pure reaction um, and yeah I think like I said, it, it depends how focused you are on a twist for me I'd rather someone enjoy the book and really root for the characters than be really shocked by the twist I feel like the twist is like a little perk almost the icing on the cake rather than the be all and end all for me mm. and so yeah it's about kind of getting getting an idea of reactions mm. so how do you go about kind of like creating that I I always viewed thrillers as like a roller coaster <laughs> You think you've got it, you've not. It's how, 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 like, do you plot or are you similar to Tess and you kind of have your general concept and work towards the end and kind of see where it kind of naturally travels to? Uh, I think I would go very, very wrong if I didn't plot. Um, with this book, Kills, I actually started it knowing the ending, <laughs> harking back to my, uh, my kid. I could think that's where I would read in first. I knew who I wanted <laughs> to be, you know, behind it all. And I went back from there and sort of put together a chapter by chapter outline, a one sentence summary being like, okay, this is what should happen in each scene. And I sort of mapped out the whole book in a very just quick visual summary that I could just glance at and just be like, okay, this is where the story is generally going to go. And when I had those sort of general outlines points, I, I wrote a first draft and I wrote it very quickly. It came out, it came out like I didn't write myself. I wrote it in um, three weeks, very, very quickly, and then spent a very long time afterwards um, actually editing it and adding in all those sort of like little red herrings and those little sort of things that maybe you don't think about when you're writing the first draft, but the things that bring a through this life there's things that you can look back again when you read it the second time and you're like ah oh, so that's what it meant when that character said that and yeah like Tess mentioned like layering adding all those things on um 
but it, yeah it was a long process there were certain like plot points that only came about much much later down the editing sort of process but um I think the initial the core story was always always the same I, that never changed um yeah very very helpful having that initial summary and then very very helpful as Tess mentioned having a critique partner so I, I could be like Tess what am I doing <laughs> why is this character like doing xyz Tess could be like calm down <laughs> <laughs> don't go into it because I always tend to go very complicated when I do my books I absolutely love really sort of complicated like mind-blowing twisty things where you're like oh, okay there's this piece of information you're holding on to this piece of information you're trying to figure it all out and work it all out but sometimes I go way too complicated to the point where no one else can understand what I meant but me that's where it's very <laughs> helpful to be like Ravina <laughs> what does this mean <laughs> so um, yeah, I think quite quite similar in, in that respect, um, I think, to Tess. I think characters are so important in thrillers because it can't just be about the ending. You've got this huge book. If it's just about the ending, why bother reading the rest of it, you know? So yeah. I think the fun in thrillers is actually the characters and the, the who and the why is so, so fun to think about as well. I think sometimes even more than actually who, it's why, what motivates them to do what they did what's the character psychology there that's yeah really fun as well and that also just comes with editing as well I think definitely I think that's why I've always naturally gone to the YA thrillers rather than the adult ones because I think sometimes the adult ones it's more the twists that are focused on whereas the twists don't particularly always matter if I don't care about the character in the first place like <laughs> If, if someone gets murdered, I want to care. Makes mm. me feel a bit guilty if someone, you know, get, gets killed on page 300 and I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> I'm not bothered. <laughs> when, okay. the, when the killer's revealed and, you know, which one was that again? <laughs> you can't remember. <laughs> when it's a side character that was mentioned on page, like, four once for, like, yeah. And then, oh my gosh, Martha's on, come on, Dan. And then, come on. You're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who was that again? I have no idea who that was. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think that's why YA thrillers just are that bit better for me because there is that character focus. Like, you really get to understand the characters and what they want a lot more. With the ones I have read, I'm sure someone will suggest something that will prove me wrong, but you know. So with writing often comes a bit of research. I was wondering if you could perhaps tell us either the strangest or weirdest thing you've perhaps researched for your books or um, anything that would set alarm bells off if people didn't know you as a writer um that you put into google i guess um shall we start with tess sure, yeah um so i mean research wise for someone who's watching you i did take multiple tours of the prison um when yeah pre-covid when they were kind of up and running which they are again now but um yeah so just some amazing insight into not just what life was like as a prisoner in the victorian times but also modern day as well and then um, there's stories that kind of really make you stop and you know feel the history of a place um, and I was booked to go on a tour of the Georgian prison which is underneath the Victorian prison so underground and these kind of tunnels but the tunnel collapsed and um, the day before I was supposed to go probably good that it didn't happen last time yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah other than that um, I mean I, I think settings are so important to me I do try to visit them and um, my next, my book comes out in 2024, is based in a um, very remote place in Mid Wales um, that I lived in as a teenager for a short while. Um, and I revisited that last week. And it's, yeah, just, just being there is um, research in itself. Um, and then, of course, there's all the, the usual search history of you know, how various stages of decomposition <laughs> do people die from this. And um, 
yeah, the, the stuff that you probably find on any thriller writer's uh, search engine, I think. Yeah, I, I feel like um, being a thriller writer is like, throws some questionable Google searches out into the world. Um, yeah. It's the detail that you need to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just someone knocking on the door, like, I, we need to speak to you. Oh, I wrote this. <laughs> it's a book, I wrote it, I promise it's fine. <laughs> Um, what what kind of things did you have to research for this book kills was there anything in particular that kind of stands out as a unique or interesting thing well very early on when I was sort of plotting and I was coming up with who the killer was and how they did it um I started looking into sort of poisons and things like that so all the yeah the very standard sort of things that you put to google and um i in an earlier in an earlier draft in an earlier world um there was an idea i had where um the time the body was found was going to be this really key like plot point and um there was going to be a huge sort of twist base around that and i remember researching um after you die, what happens to the contents of food in your stomach? So could you tell if someone's had dinner? How long ago have they had dinner? And I started just going down this rabbit hole of reading like scientific papers because my I'm a biochemist. I did a biochemistry degree. And I remember just going like very, very scientific and then just having to stop myself. Like, what, what on earth are you doing? Like, you've gone too far. <laughs> We're like three pages in and looking at like at Al's like research paper from like 1994 like why are you here and um, I think it was at that point I sort of had to yeah just stop myself and be like yeah the research has gone off the rails I'm more interested in this than I am in yeah, it, can, to it can become a form of procrastination kind of <laughs> convincing yourself this is for the book <laughs> you're just going down endless uh, rabbit holes yeah, I watched Early Murders in the Building entirely for, for research purposes <laughs> anything else, so. Definitely. I'm watching all of these true crime shows, but it's for the book. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's just for the book, so, you know, I can get a general idea and then I'll research some more. <laughs> I, I think especially, like, thriller writing, like, motives and psychology is what I'd kind of end up in a rabbit hole of because I always find that quite like interesting why people do things and nature versus nurture and all that kind of stuff really intrigues me so I'm not surprised you'd end up down like strange rabbit holes that would be like wait I should stop a minute <laughs> so I have to ask is there any UK YA books you would recommend and um, we'll go with Tess yeah um yeah so there are so many which is yeah difficult to um to think of particular ones but um I would have to mention my mentor from a few years ago Cynthia Murphy who is um yeah quickly becoming the, the queen of um Really chiller thrillers in the UK, which are really kind of pacey and um, you know, exciting YA thrillers with their really unexpected turns. Um, also, Amy Bischel, who writes um, YA contemporary, which is not usually my genre, but um, I just find her writing so kind of poetic and lyrical that, again, it's, it's very almost the opposite of the way I write in quite a, a pacey. Um, fashion that she you can just really tell she takes a lot of care over each word and I just find it really you know impressive and um, interesting to read different styles of writing um, and I also wanted to mention Dean Atter who writes um, po um, novels in verse and I picked up one of his books uh, a year or so ago and again very much felt out of my comfort zone I thought I don't 
never felt quite sophisticated enough for poetry. <laughs> and then I read it in a similar way to you'd read a, a thriller and I kind of just devoured it. And I think a good thriller is something you can read without feeling like you're reading. You're just kind of feeling it and living it. And, um, you know, unless it really realised two hours have gone by and you haven't noticed. And that's what I felt about Black Flamingo, his book, his first book. Um, yeah, so it's, again, that trying to read a, a wide variety of genres, um, which is why I like the Paper Orange book, of course, uh, box, because um, <laughs> been lots of uh, lots of books that I've received there that I wouldn't have naturally picked up. Um, but yeah, it is, I think it's it's brilliant to see how much talent there is in the UK YA scene. So um, yeah, trying to yeah. read widely. Yeah, there's, there's, there's some great choices there. So how about you? Is there any UK YA books that you particularly enjoyed recently? I don't know what that people go with it. Yeah, speaking of Paper Orange, Gina Blackthorpe's You Can Trust Me. Um, I think that was a, a Paper Orange book a couple of months ago. Um, yeah, it was our first one. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, YA thriller, but like just deals with some really important issues and it's just so timely as well and it just has all those classic mystery elements and all these sort of these alibis that are just really murky and that cover is just so stunning as well um, yeah and um one of the perks actually of, of coming into the writing world is getting to see early copies of books that are going to be coming out so I'm going to be shouting out some books that are coming out um next year so both in February 23 um Annika Hussain's This Is How You Fall In Love it's this YA rom-com that is just so adorable and just like so cute and lifts your mood but it just has so many takes on like the classic tropes it's just yeah a big big hug and um Ayan Mohammed's um book you think you know me um also coming out february 23 um it is it's just so powerful um both these books are why i can agree and it just deals again with some really like timely issues but it's just so beautiful and um ayan and i actually went to school together so like it's very very cute that um we're going to be debuting next year together with osborne so that's yeah, amazing <laughs> it's such a small world I remember hearing and I was like oh my god I am like um <laughs> her sister was my best friend in high school um and I was I think two years below um and I remember hearing and I immediately tested her sister and I was like oh my god <laughs> what a small world um but yeah her book is just incredible um so those are books that just pretty yeah really look forward to in 23 yeah there's there's definitely some good books coming out next year like this year has been incredible for books and then I've like things for next year have slowly started showing up at my house and in my email box and I'm just like <laughs> there's so many I've um, at some points I got I think I got three books in one day and I'm like I have no idea which one to pick up first because they were all for the same month usually if one comes in like three come in and like one comes out quicker I'll be like oh I'll pick that one up and they were like three completely different like genres vibes and I literally couldn't pick between them it was so difficult um I mean there's worse problems to have I must admit, I'm, just, I'm not going to complain about being sent things early, um, but they definitely sound like ones that I need to pick up as well. So thank you so much for kind of talking to me and taking part in UKYA Author Week, which I know is a mouthful. I've made everyone say it for the videos and yeah, it's 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 a mouthful. I did. But before we go, do you briefly want to kind of give a little synopsis on your book and I will make sure that everything and 
all your social medias and your pre-order links as well are linked in the video when this goes up. Thank you. So shall we start with Tess and then? Sure, yeah, so um, my debut YA thriller, Someone Is Watching You, comes out on the 2nd of February 2023. Um, and yet it's about a girl who explores an abandoned prison to impress her friends and uh, quickly realises that she's trapped inside. Um, she is not alone and she's going to struggle to make it out of there alive. Um, and that's out with Hachette early next year. So, yeah, mine's a YA thriller. Um, it's out the 5th of January 23. It's set in an elite boarding school and it follows a girl named Jess Chowdhury who's forced to turn detective when one of her classmates is found murdered in the woods and the scene is arranged to look like a scene from a short story she wrote and she needs to figure out who the murderer is or else she'll be next. Yeah. Both sound horrifying. <laughs> 